We have now come to the point of the, the study for today. And as was mentioned before, the title of this study is Priests and Kings. We invite Brother Levi forward to give the study for today. And may we pray in our hearts that this message may touch us in a way that may bring us closer to Christ. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I honestly, I did not expect so many people for the divine service here in the nature where Jesus Christ is our King. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, I would like to start. Uh, I think that everybody had a good freezing, uh, chilly uh, uh, night. <laughs> but uh, that was a reason uh, uh, for us to have a good sleep because people sleep well when you have such a good quality uh, of air here, yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about young people, I didn't see, I didn't hear any screaming overnight, so I assume that they were good, they were well behaved. Very well. comfortable. Yeah, I would like to extend my greetings and welcome to all the friends, visitors, young people and unexpected visitors for today in the morning and I hope that you still have a couple of minutes available for us before the lunch, yes? Amen. Um, I would like to talk uh, uh, to continue the Sabbath school, did you like the Sabbath school? Amen. Yes. I would like to talk about uh, Sam, uh, the Solomon. Uh, in the first, uh, in the, the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon ma makes a very powerful statement. He gives an incentive of his life uh, somewhere in the second part. Uh, basically, he was 53 years of, of age and he died. So people say uh, the book of Proverbs were, was written by Solomon when he was old. There is no such a thing. Solomon died at the age of 53, so there was no, uh, no old. dreaming uh, <laughs> about uh, old age and stuff. However, he makes a statement that impresses me. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 12. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. This is a very powerful statement because in one declaration, in one Bible verse, you have the entire consistency of what a Leodicean is. Now, there are two controversial words here. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, do you know why I rely this sermon on one single Bible verse? In a way, we all are in the shoes of Solomon. And before we become preachers and missionaries, we like to be kings. Miserable kings. We are control freaks and we are obsessed with controlling the minds and the lives of the people around us. Until we get tired of ourselves when we see the misery at the end of the day. Is that true? Yes. Now, my ethical question is, is there a difference between to be a, a king or a ruler or to be a leader? Is there a difference? What is easier for you, to be ruler or to be leader? What is easier for me, my human nature, to be a king or to be a preacher? I, I have my son, Jordan, Daniel, and uh, in one morning in the divine, uh, in morning worship, I ask him, what do you want to become? What do you want to achieve in life? He's nine years of age. He was scratching his head and says, Dad, you know, I want to become a preacher. And I, I want to become policeman too. <laughs> and I said, whoa. So how do you synchronize these two things? You know, preacher and police. Well, first you preach the word of God to them. And then if they don't, uh, they don't behave, you, you become a police. Put them in jail and beat them up, you know. And that recalls my attention to how the police behaves in our country. When they catch up with a, with a bad guy, with an... Uh, you know, robber or a thief or a drug addictor or somebody bad in our society, the police uh, addresses a question to the guy. If you behave, behave like a gentleman, I will treat you like a gentleman. That is in our world. If you don't behave like a gentleman, then we switch. We turn the page. Yes? So 
I believe that we have this situation. Solomon has a statement somewhere in history that people that live like animals will die like animals. And today I want to ask you, brothers and sisters and friends and visitors, young people, what is easier for you to be, a police patrol guy or a preacher? Solomon says, I was a king in Israel, but now I am a preacher. Uh, it's chapter 1, verse 12. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Do you know how was the life of Solomon as a king, boys and girls? The spirit of prophecy and the history says that he became a tyrant. He was so obsessed with silver and gold until he got depressed. His throne of Fildish was, uh, was, uh, was, 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 was covered in gold. Six lions on one side, six lions on the other side. Do, does someone know how many steps or how many stairs were up to Solomon's throne? So you have six lions on the la one side, six lions on the other side, and six stairs up to his throne. So you have six, six, six. Six, number six in the Bible, represents the number of imperfection. Is the time when men was born in the awesome God, uh, hands of God. Is that true? But man wants to be God. I want to be God and I didn't tell anybody. Did you want to be God? These are actions that have never been written anywhere. But in deep in our hearts. We want to be kings of the universe. We want to be gods. And man, I struggle so much to control others and to, to, to make sure that I rule with my specific tyranny until I got in my personal misery and I got so tired of myself to rule. And I heard a voice whispering gently as I never heard in my life. A voice that I can compare with the sweetest melody that comes from heaven. It was the voice of Jesus. And the song was this. Are you tired of yourself? You know, boys and girls, as long as we are not tired of ourselves, and even the adults, we will still continue to rule our fellow neighbors. We want to impose the way that we feel, the way that we think. We want to engage our security to make people our slaves. That happens in in the almighty governments, in society, in churches, in families, in the group of friends, we want to control others because we are still acting, thinking, behaving like kings. I used to be a very miserable, hypocrite, Leodicean type of king. Now, because we have a crisis of identity in our life, I want to talk to you for a second, to your heart. Have you ever reached the stage in your life when you really got tired of who you are? When you realized that all the efforts to be the ruler of the world did not make you happy? I thought that if I control minds and I am obsessed that everybody will march the way that I say, it would make me happy. Solomon was so tyrant that he was so greedy for money. He grasped the silver and the gold from the poor, the poor of the, of the society, of the nation. He had gold and silver like no other king in the world. 
And at the end of the day, he was a dog was happier than Solomon. A dog was happier than Solomon. You know why? Because if you throw a piece of bread to a dog, a dog will smile to you, will lick your shoes. Here is almost 53 years of age, King of Solomon, King Solomon, uh, sitting on, on a throne covered with gold. There was entertainment before him. They were clowns and, 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 and coming to make jokes and, and try to, to, to grasp a little smile from Solomon. He was not capable to share a smile with the people that tried to entertain him. He was not happy. So brothers and sisters, friends, my fellow citizens and visitors, I do believe that the time when we meet the Lord Jesus Christ is the time when we switch, give up our kingly power, and become preachers for Christ. Is that beautiful exchange? What do you think? Is that okay? Amen. I mean, how many of you had this miserable experience of treating, behaving like a king? I did. Do you? Yes. Don't give me church answers. Thank you for your honesty. But I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, because we cannot be kings and preachers in the same time. And Solomon realized that too. I, the preacher was what king. so he gave up that job you know and uh, says look i i i am tired i want to go to god this history says that after 40 40 40 years of atheism solomon kneels down to make his prayer after so many years and he could not pray the enemy shut up his mouth he wanted to say forgive me god and he could not say those words. Other words came out of his lips. First prayer after 40 years of kingship. Miserable king. Defeated one like Napoleon he won. He lost the war. Well, uh, uh, the Waterloo against the British. He's looking to heaven. And he says, The almighty God is too much for me. I lost. Napoleon did not acknowledge the defeat. He said, not the British defeated me. But the king of the universe, Jesus Christ, is altogether too much for me. I cannot handle Jesus. Solomon, in the same situation, my dear friends, Solomon reaches the same stage, kneels down. And when he want to say, I beg you, help me. Save me from myself. King of the universe, I want to I wanna give you my kingship. Make me your servant. I am willing to preach to you, to, to the people in your behalf. And when he wanted to say that prayer, the history says that his words, the only words after so many decades, vanity. Everything is vanity and vexation of the world, of the world. The very first, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1. It's the very first attempt of a man that was the richest, the, I mean, was handsome, wise, powerful, and unhappy. I want to say, my friends, that today we have an exchange to say, to do. And uh, I want to ask you, do you really want... To let Jesus to be the king. And you to be the preacher. Do you think that that's an ethical exchange? Boys. Do you want to be preacher instead of the king? And let Jesus be king? But the king means. That he's in control. Oh. I don't like that idea. I. I. Want. To be. In control. Uh, in fact, many times, how many of you are drivers? One, two, three, okay, majority. You know, how do you feel when somebody else drives beside you? <laughs> or I should uh, reverse the question. 
Is there any any other driver better than you? Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, because I believe for many years that I am the best driver. And uh, some ladies comment uh, here uh, that uh, men have this obsession, ladies don't. <laughs> I want to uh, echo your voice. But, uh, you know, brothers and sisters and friends, when we drive, Jesus sits in the, to the right side. And uh, he wants to do the switch. Do you want me to drive? Boys, do you want Jesus to drive? He wants to be the king. Jesus. Well, yes, brother. Somebody says Jesus is the co-pilot. The co-pilot, but that doesn't work, yeah? <laughs> you know, but no, the question of the ego says, yeah. okay, Lord, if you drive, what are I going to do? You drive, and I, what are I going to do? I want to earn my salvation. I want to do something for me. I want to perspire. I want to impress people with my holiness. I want to do something. I want to revolutionize the world. And Jesus is looking to me and says, you know what? While I'm driving, you preach the gospel. I drive the sense, the purpose of your life. I'm the driver. And in fact, if you look to the titles, I elevate you to the level of priest. You preach the gospel and I drive you to the turmoil. And you will never die if you stay with me. Let me do the driving and you the preaching. If you want to do the driving and I the preaching, I don't need you because I can do both. Yes? <laughs> yes. Now, the Bible in, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 11 says that Jesus says, like, take my yoke. Yo. It didn't say take my BMW, yes? Or take my Corvette. Take my yoke. Yo. Yo. Why? Instrumental service. He says, in this yoke, I am the driver. Yeah. I, the king of the universe, low myself to your level. And instead of the king, I become your driver that you may become my servant, my preacher. And we go together. I drive. I carry the yoke. And you preach and you come shoulder to shoulder with me. Do you remember time when Peter was, uh, Peter was a king? When was Peter a king? When he was walking on the water. Man, I'm so holy, I don't need even prayer. I walk on the water. What do you think about uh, me or somebody here? If somebody will walk on the water. And you see these are beautiful. We go to... Julia knows the crater. time tomorrow, the crater. And you use the binocular and see someone from us walking on the lake. What would you think? It's a saying. Let's him cut let's us colonize him. Make him saint of the church. He doesn't need any but prayer. And Peter is walking on the water. Was he walking humbly or as a king? What do you think? Can we say instead of Solomon, I Peter was a king in the church of God. But now I am a preacher. When, when Peter became a preacher? When he sang? Yeah. And then he said, Lord, save, not the king. Let the king die. Amen. Save poor me. So when Peter asked for help, the king was going straight to the bottom of the lake in that very night. And the king died, buried by the waves. But the poor Peter, who won deliverance, was saved. And now, Jesus says, so uh, I propose to you, Peter, a switch. Would you accept me to be the king and you to be the preacher? Lord, do whatever. Just let me take me out of the back of the boat. So Jesus is holding the hand of Peter, and Peter is holding the hand of Jesus, and both together, Jesus the driver, and Peter the preacher. Jesus the king, and Peter the preacher. I, the preacher, was king in Israel, uh, over Israel in Jerusalem. My dear